Rain Access Solutions. Hi, I'm Glenn of Rain Access Solutions. Welcome to my vlog. Welcome again to my C-Sharp.net tutorials for beginners. In this lesson number 7, we're going to tackle about basic operators in C-Sharp.net. Also, we're going to tackle a bit about this other variable type which is called the boolean or simply the bool spelled b o o l the boolean is a variable type that returns only to result it is either a true or a false result it is very useful for determining or finding out the user response or or something else we can check if something is missing or if the user entered something that is what we are expecting to see so for example i'm going to put variable implicitly n number is equal to 100 now i'm going to declare another variable and this time let's declare it as a bool and let's use a naming convention for bool which is the l or the logical name l result And then we'll, we will out, output the result. So, so <clears throat> let's explain this code a bit. I declare a var the variable n number implicitly by using the var as if we remember from our previous lessons. And here is a bool declaration of this variable l result which says if number is equal to 100 return true result otherwise return false let's click run here the output is saying that the operation above is true it's because we have declared implicitly the number and number variable and assigned 100 value to it now the l result is returning true because this part here and closed in the um, open and close parenthesis is returning true Okay, let me just explain the difference between the equal sign and the double equal sign. The equal sign means assignment. Like here, we are assigning 100 to n number. Or we can also say string c variable c, sorry, c name is equal to blend so it is an assignment of a value to a variable while the other one is for equality which means if a number is equal to 100 we add double if we want to find out if we wish to find out if the number is equal to 100 we must put double equal sign and not just equal sign okay again let's run the code it is still showing true okay i will introduce another operator called the not operator so 
I can put it here. So instead of equal, we can put not equal to 100. If this statement, let's just comment this one here, this part here. If this statement here is true, then the result will return true. While if this statement is false, which means if this n number is not 100, then it shall return false. Let's run this code. It is returning false because we put not equal. So, let's see the statement. Is by, I mean, let's translate it into our own language and not the computer programming language. So, let's say, is the result of n number is not equal to 100? The answer is false because actually the n number is equal to 100. If we change it to 50 and click run, it will return true. The not operator works in conjunction with the equal. So you read it as not equal to. Sorry, let's just create another one here. Not equal to. We are actually trying to know if what we declared here is true. So this is the use of the dot operator and for the boolean as well. So here we're using the boolean to verify whether the statement is true or not. Another thing is the negation. We can use this not operator for negate negation to negate this statement for example let's enclose this into a parenthesis and put equal and reverse it change this to 100 In the statement n number is equal to 100 is enclosed in a open and close parenthesis and then we added the not now this thing here will reverse the value of n number or negate it so if n number is correct if this statement is true based on the declaration of the variable but by adding this it will return the the offset or the i mean the the reversed result first we remove the not operator and see the result click run okay it says true here the result stays true because the n number this statement is correct but if we put not the not operator and run the code again now it will return false this is because this is because we have negated this statement which means we actually um, whatever whatever is in this statement we change its um, logical value to otherwise i mean to the to the opposite value so okay so if we change this one to 50 for example then the equation i mean the return um, result will be true because this statement is actually false based on our declaration but we added the not operator so it negates this one and the result will be true so where do we actually use this thing, this negation? Okay, let's now go to Visual Studio and create a new project. I'm just going to demonstrate you the usefulness, of, the usefulness of the negation. Let's create a lesson seven form in the lesson seven folder. Then as usual, we're going to select the .NET 8.0 for its long-term support. Click Create. Usually, I use the checkbox to perform checking whether I want to, for example, if I want to show the photo, a photo of a, a staff in the, in the attendance software, I might tick the checkbox or whether 
the person is um, married or not. But anyway, I'm going to use the checkbox here just to demonstrate this usage. So now I have a button and a checkbox on the form. I'll rename this button and change its name to PTN or CMD switch and change its text to switch. Now the checkbox, for the checkbox, I'm going to change its name to chk toggle and its text to toggle. The form name, change the form text to lesson 7 okay now that we are set let's run this form click switch nothing happens right but if i click the toggle it ticks the checkbox now if we tick this one the value will become true and if we untick this the value of this checkbox will become false now if we wish to run the toggling for this checkbox programmatically we're going to add that into this switch button without ticking this checkbox let's do it open the switch button and add this code chk toggle check is equal to not check toggle checked you can write it as this without the open and close parenthesis or you can write it with it both will perform the same let's run it without the open and close parenthesis click the switch button there you go if i click if i click the switch button again it uncheck the toggle if i click it again it checks again but if i untick again and it goes to its never ending checking and unchecking this is the beauty with using the negate option because i don't have to type it like this let's just comment this out first if so here i'm here in this part i'm going to use the command if Okay, so this whole code snippet here is equal to this one-liner code. That's because we didn't use the, I mean, I mean, although this code here seems longer, the purpose of this code is equal to what we are trying to achieve in this one-liner code. Here we are actually specifying that if ch if the chk toggle if the checkbox is checked, then we will change its value to false so that, as I've said earlier, if the value is false, then the checkbox will be unticked. If the value is else, else which means if it's not checked, then we will check it. Let's run the code. Notice that when I click on the switch button, the toggle is automatically being checked. And when I, when I click the button again, it unticks the selection. So that's what I'm 
so that's what I'm trying to explain this is the use this is that's so that's what we're trying to achieve with this negation so the benefit of negation in this in this um, part in this example is that I don't have to to actually check whether the checkbox is ticked or not and then I will have to manually um, set its value to either ticked or not ticked like what we are seeing here in this code and that this single line eliminates this longer code right okay let's go back to our online compiler so another operation that we need to learn aside from the not operator is the greater than sign I guess everyone is already familiar with the greater than sign as well as the less than sign so we all know that this means that something is greater than the other value like for example boolean l is 5 is greater than 4 And run it. It says true. Okay, here in this example, we created a Boolean variable and assigned a value to it if if number 5 is greater than 4 it should return if number 5 is greater than number 4 it should return true otherwise if we change the equation and run it now it's returning false it's because 4 is never greater than 5 we can also change that to less than sign to negate the value of is 5 is greater than 4 run it and it will become we can create another example is 4 is sorry I'm sorry it's 5 is less than 4 Okay, and change this one. Yes, L is 5 less than 4. Run it. Okay, we get the false return. I mean the return false. Because the because 5 will never be less than 4. That is why this statement is false. So another um, another operator that I want to show you guys is the um, mode or modulo or simply the mode or modulo. Not module, it's modulo. Okay. The use for this modulo is to to know if the given number it has a um, okay cancel that okay I use the modulo to determine if a number is even or an odd number I used modulo or mod to to find out or to determine if the number is even or an odd number for example let's declare implicitly 
is 10 a is 10 an odd number then modulo 2 is equal to 0 and let's get the and let's get the output and comment this part here we go run this okay the answer is false which means that this statement is true because if you divide 10 by 2 you don't get a um, a remainder is equal to 5 and you don't get a remainder so if you divide 11 for example divided by 2 or modulo of 11 let's see false it's because dividing 11 by 2 will return a remainder you wish to find that out let's let's go ahead and show the value assign this to variable And result and comment this out run it okay here it is saying that there is a remainder of 1 hence it this statement returned false all right guys that's it for today's video I hope you guys learned something again um, if you find this video useful please subscribe to my channel Leave your comments at the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day everyone. Goodbye.